ERC, quality service since 1972. Repairing TVs, console stereos, electronic musical instruments, pinball machines, arcade games, and more. Call 836-0454. I'm James Spann. This is our Weather Extreme video. This is for Thursday morning, the 3rd of April. Historic Alabama Weather Day, today and tomorrow. It just seems like something happens every year on either April 3rd or April 4th of significance, and we could be looking at a pretty decent uh, severe weather threat tomorrow and maybe a few scattered strong storms later today. Let's look out the window this morning from our SkyCam network. These shots taken about 5 o'clock. We're looking at uh, uh, Birmingham out over the UAB campus and the medical center there coming from our SkyCam on top of the Daniel Building looking south. There's a look at the lights of the city of Gadsden coming from the Sky Cam up on Lookout Mountain, not too far from Nakalula Falls. And our Inverness Sky Cam from the Wingate Inn on U.S. Highway 280. Traffic nice and light early this morning. There's a peek at the uh, satellite imagery this morning, and I wanted to show the surface chart for a couple of reasons. First off, we've got a, uh, a wedge setting up. Notice the uh, surface high near Philadelphia beginning to creep down from the northeast, and we'll keep an eye on that. That could keep East Alabama cooler today. And also, there's a stall front. Now, this graphic has the front over uh, South Alabama. I think it's farther north than that. Uh, but it will be moving north during the day today, and, and uh, that will probably be over Tennessee by afternoon. But that wedge front could set up a few scattered showers and storms later today. Now, this wedge does not seem to be as strong as the one last Sunday. Uh, we do have 40s over uh, North Carolina this morning, and we'll keep watching that drain down the Appalachians. And again, we'll see a pretty good spread from east to west. The warmer readings near the Mississippi border, the cooler readings near the Georgia border today. Convective outlook, there's a whopper of a moderate risk over a pretty good chunk of Texas, southeast Oklahoma, west Arkansas, and the northwest corner of Louisiana. That includes Dallas-Fort Worth, Shreveport, Fort Smith, McAllister, Oklahoma, uh, San Angelo, and surrounding that, there's a slight risk all the way from West Texas up to, uh, well, almost Memphis, Muscle Shoals, Paducah, Kentucky, and almost as far north as St. Louis. So uh, needless to say, we'll be watching all of that with interest today. And then tomorrow, a risk covers almost all of Alabama. It's a slight risk, and uh, there might be an upgrade uh, based on some of the parameters we're seeing as, uh, if that keeps up later today. And then on day three, Saturday, the risk is uh, over for us, and it's over uh, on the Atlantic seaboard. Now, here's the latest QPF graphic, and I think this might be a little aggressive here. This is suggesting three inches, maybe four inches in spots over the Tennessee Valley with uh, one inch for the southern half of the state. I think the amounts will be closer to one inch here. Uh, and, again, isolated amounts maybe to two inches. And this would be, of course, with any uh, scattered storms today and then the round of showers and storms tomorrow afternoon and tomorrow night. Here's modeling. This is the OZGFS valid at 1 o'clock today. This is at 500 millibars. Uh, the trough is showing up nicely out west. At the surface, again, it's the two features, the warm front lifting north. And again, we think that will be over Interstate 40 later today over Tennessee. And the really good widespread soaking rain will be north of that front. we got the wedge coming down from the east. And uh, along that wedge front, uh, maybe uh, along Interstate 65, there could be a few uh, showers and storms today. And uh, maybe some scattered strong storms, especially over West Alabama if the capping inversion can break over there. But again, the big severe weather threat is not today. It's, it's tomorrow and tomorrow night. Uh, tomorrow, the trough gets closer. And down below that, we've got uh, a surface load that is uh, near Cincinnati with a trailing front. Uh, this is at midday, uh, down through uh, Little Rock and Dallas-Fort Worth. And, and again, there is a very real chance we could see a few isolated storms developing out ahead of that, especially over the western part of the state, west of I-65 tomorrow afternoon. If those can pop up, uh, they could rotate and uh, maybe produce isolated tornadoes. And then at midnight tomorrow night, uh, we've got the squall line coming through here. And this run seems to be a little slower with the squall line than previous runs. Uh, there's a look at the uh, instability for uh, uh, 6 p.m. I'm sorry, 7 p.m. I keep forgetting we're back on daylight saving time now. 7 p.m. tomorrow. And uh, surface base capes well over 1,000 joules along and south of Interstate 20. And the uh, helicity values are quite high. This is the 0 to 3 kilometer helicity, and that's the reason we're a bit concerned about the possibility of a few isolated tornadoes. 
so again, we could see those uh, isolated supercells developing tomorrow afternoon over West Alabama, and then tomorrow night a squall line comes through. Of course, the main potential with that would be from damaging straight line winds. We'll go to uh, Saturday at 1 o'clock, and again, you can see how clearly this run is slower. It's still got rain south of Birmingham. Uh, so if this trend continues, we might have to keep rain in there maybe until 8, 9 o'clock Saturday morning. And then the sky begins to clear Saturday afternoon. Sunday still looks like a beautiful day as the front is stalled out just south of the uh, Gulf Coast. Monday, a disturbance passes north of the state. This run keeps it fairly far to the north and keeps us dry. And then on Tuesday, uh, again, the weather here looks dry. Another feature north of us around St. Louis. We'll go to Wednesday of next week at a big old deep trough, negative tilt off to the west. That could be a severe weather issue for the Plain States, but it's just going to take a while in getting here. Thursday, that rotates north of us in ridging holes. Friday the 11th, same deal. Ridge here, trough out west. And then on Saturday the 12th, finally we get uh, uh, that thing uh, close enough to us to bring in a chance of showers and storms. But again, with the main forcing way north, that would suggests no major severe weather threats. So uh, we'll continue to back down on the idea of a rain event at the end of next week and hold that off until Saturday the 12th. Go a couple of more days. Uh, the 14th, here comes a new trough, and that's suggesting a pretty good band of showers and storms. And three days later, look at that. There's our late-season cold snap. Now, if there's any one good thing about that, we don't see that big ridge pumped up over the, the western part of the continent that maybe would tap true Arctic air. But still, that's cold. That's Again, this is the 17th, so just remember, if you're a grower, the idea of a mid-April cold snap with some frost or maybe a freeze is on the board. We just can't tell you exactly when or how cold yet. We're just saying it's out there, and of course, as uh, uh, that get closer, we'll have more confidence in the ability to tell you exactly uh, how cold and who gets it. That's it for the Weather Extreme video this morning. We'll have notes on the blog, the next video here by 3.30 or so today. And, of course, we invite you to watch us on television this evening, ABC 3340 News at 5, 6, and 10 o'clock. Again, thanks for watching. Have a wonderful day, and God bless.